we're going to do three examples from Larson's calculus of using Lagrange multipliers to find extreme values of a function with respect to some constraint. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing this method, and this video has chapters so you can skip around the problems as you please. You can see the method of Lagrange multipliers written here. These steps are written with respect to the three variable case. Our last example will be with three independent variables, but our first two examples will be with two independent variables. Recall in a nutshell what we have to do is find the gradient of the function we're trying to optimize, find the gradient of the constraint function g, and then set them equal to each other with the gradient of g multiplied by the Lagrange multiplier lambda. Then we use this equation alongside the constraint in order to find a set of points satisfying all of the equations. We then plug those points into the function in order to find the maximum or the minimum. Here's the first problem. Minimize f of xy equals x squared plus y squared with the constraint x plus 2y minus 5 equals 0. Now this is a paraboloid and this is a plane, so we're looking for the highest point on the intersection of the paraboloid with the plane. We need to begin by finding the gradient functions, grad f and grad g, keeping in mind that g is just this expression here. We can treat that as our g function, and of course the constraint is that it has to equal 0. Now grad f, that's just the vector whose components are the partial derivatives. So this here is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Clearly that's 2x. The partial derivative of f with respect to y is just 2y. Then for grad g, we're taking the partial derivative of this guy with respect to x, which is just 1, and then the partial with respect to to y is just 2. Then we know at that minimum point we're looking for, the gradient of f must equal some scalar multiple of the gradient of g. They must be parallel. So we have this equation, which means that this is equal to lambda times this. This then gives us a system of equations, because the corresponding components must be equal. Namely, 2x must equal 1 lambda, and 2y must equal 2 lambda. There those equations are, and so we're going to plug these back in to the constraint. Since 2x equals lambda, clearly x equals half lambda, so we replace x with half lambda. Since 2y equals 2 lambda, clearly y equals lambda, so we replace 2y with 2 lambda. And then, of course, minus 5 equals 0. This is just a linear equation in lambda, and so we solve for lambda. 1 half lambda plus 4 halves lambda is 5 halves lambda. Move the 5 to the other side, and we have that lambda is equal to 2. But remember, 2x equals lambda. So if lambda is 2, x must equal 1. And 2y equals 2 lambda. So if lambda is equal to 2, 2y must equal 4, and so y must equal 2. Then, we can plug this point, x equals 1, y equals 2, into our function in order to find this minimum value subject to the constraint. So the minimum of our function f, subject to the given constraint, x plus 2y minus 5 equals 0, is the function's value, at this point we found, 1, 2. So that would just be 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 1 plus 4, which is Five. On screen now, you can see a graph of this paraboloid and its intersection with the plane, and you can see that minimum point in green, which we just found, 1, 2, 5. Now, for our second problem, we are asked to maximize f of xy equals this. You may recognize this as the top half of a sphere. And we have the constraint x plus y minus 2 equals 0. This you may recognize as a plane. So we're looking for the highest point on the intersection of this semisphere with this plane. Now square roots are messy, and if we take partial derivatives of this function with the square root, it's going to be a bit of a mess. We would need the chain rule, but we're in luck, because the point that maximizes the given square root function will also maximize the expression inside, which is the square of the function. 
So far more convenient to worry about maximizing the square of this function, which doesn't have the square root, and the point we find will also be the point that maximizes the original function. So we're going to deal with the square of the function and then take the point we find to plug it back into the original function. Again, we begin by finding the gradients. The gradient of f squared is just going to be the partial derivative of this with respect to x, which is negative 2x, and then the second component is the partial derivative of this, f squared, with respect to y, which is negative 2y. So that's the gradient of f squared. Then the gradient of g, well again, we're just going to say that this is g, and the constraint is that g must equal 0. So the first component of its gradient is the partial derivative with respect to x, which of course is just 1, and same thing for the partial derivative with respect to y. Then we'll set the gradient of f squared equal to lambda times the gradient of g. The maximum point we're looking for must occur somewhere where the gradients of these things are parallel. So then this gradient vector we just found must equal lambda times this gradient vector that we just found. And from this, we get a system of equations. Negative 2x must equal lambda, and negative 2y must equal lambda, because corresponding components of equal vectors must be equal. So we have that negative 2x equals lambda, and negative 2y equals lambda. And of course, we can plug these things back into the constraint function. The constraint is that x plus y minus 2 must equal 0. So x plus y must equal 2. But from this equation, we know that x is lambda divided by negative 2. And from this equation, we know that y is also lambda divided by negative 2. So lambda over negative 2 plus lambda over negative 2 must equal positive 2. Again, that's just from the constraint equation. We can multiply both sides of this equation by negative 2 and then add the lambdas to find that 2 lambda equals negative 4. Hence, lambda is equal to negative 2. Thus, plugging lambda equals negative 2 into these equations, we have that x equals positive 1 and y equals positive 1. This point, 1, 1, will maximize this function, f squared, but it will also maximize the square root of the function, f, which we were originally interested in. So the maximum of that expression we were originally interested in, subject to that given constraint, is just f of 1, 1, which is equal to 2. Because that's 6 minus 1 squared minus 1 squared, that's 6 minus 1 minus 1, which is 4, in the square root, and so that's why we get 2. On screen now, you can see the graph of f, the semisphere, and the constraint, which is that plane g equals 0. And you can see that maximum point at which they intersect, which we just found, 1, 1, 2. This last example has three independent variables and so exists in the fourth dimension, so we will not be able to visualize it. However, the method works just the same. We're maximizing this function, x, y, z, where x, y, and z are positive, with this constraint, x plus y plus z minus 3 equals 0. Again, we begin with the gradient functions. Grad f is the vector consisting of the partial derivatives of f. The partial derivative of f with respect to x is just yz. With respect to y, it's xz. With respect to z, it's xy. The partial derivatives of g with respect to x are 1. With respect to y is 1. With respect to z is also 1. So, of course, we're looking for points x, y, where the gradient of f and the gradient of g are parallel, meaning they're scalar multiples of each other. And so, we have that this gradient equals lambda times that gradient. From this, we get a system of equations. y, z must equal lambda, x, z must equal lambda, and x, y must equal lambda. Hence, for example, y, z equals xz, because they're both equal to lambda. If yz equals xz, then it must be that x equals y. We know that these are all non-zero, remember, because they have to be positive. But then we also have that xz equals xy. But if x equals y, that would mean that yz equals yy. And so z equals y. Hence, x, y, and z are all equal. So in the constraint 
x plus y plus z minus 3 equals 0, we could replace y and z with x to have the x plus x plus x minus 3 equals 0, or alternatively, 3x minus 3 equals 0. This, of course, implies that x equals 1, and since x, y, and z are all equal, that means x, y, and z are all 1, and so it's at the point 1, 1, 1 where the constrained maximum occurs. So the maximum of f of x, y, z subject to the given constraint is, well, we just plug the point we found, 1, 1, 1, into the function. The function, remember, is just the product of x, y, and z, and so of course that maximum value is positive 1. So those are a few examples of using Lagrange multipliers to find constrained maximums and minimums with two and three variable functions. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Calculus 3 course and Calculus 3 exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed.